Good day guys, how you doing? It's Danny Stewart here from AceJapanDirect.com with another Naked Sound Review and today I have, uh, I proudly present my latest uh, Funky Junk Rescue Base which uh, is, is rather a rare one, rather unusual, uh, there aren't, aren't many of these around but this is a, a, a Morris uh, Hurricane Jane so this is the Hurricane model that was, I, I understand it was marketed for mostly female bass players because uh, they had different co color scheme to the uh, the regular Hurricanes which were black with uh, rosewood fretboards I think um, or you could get maple ones too I, I believe uh, but um, the Hurricane Jane was in white so um, and uh, this one came to me uh, in a terrible uh, state really it, it had been neglected for, for decades uh, probably left in the corner of some musty garage somewhere um, and it had suffered uh, exposure to various uh, you know, um, temperatures and uh, weather conditions so uh, the, the neck was uh, the finish was all peeling off and uh, had some warpage down the lower frets um, but um, actually funny enough the circuit was all intact and it worked fine had no pit guard, um, but circuit's all original. It is uh, working just fine. Sounds great. You know, it's got a gorgeous uh, rear pickup though. It's great. It's a wonderful bass. It plays great now. Um, it took quite a lot of work actually, I spent a, a couple of solid days on this um, and what I had to do, uh, as you can see the neck is a, it's a good quality neck, um, it's maple and worn up with more skunk stripe but it had been um, left in terrible conditions so um, um, what I actually needed doing was a bit of heat treatment um, and now the truss is operating fine and it achieves a nice action of uh, 1.5 millimeters at 12 fret right now and um, I think it could probably achieve a little bit lower if, if you really needed it to um, but to me it's, it feels very very comfortable right now and um, to counteract the uh, problems that were happening at the, the lower frets um, I discovered that the the nut was no no good anymore. So um, and to cure the angle that had happened, because um, this had basically warped a little bit backwards um, or forwards. Um, but whatever, I, I had to counteract that by um, making a a wider nut. Um, so this is actually made of hard maple, this nut, and it's more like a kind of viola style nut. And it holds the strings at an angle which works well with the bridge um, and neck in order to bring a, a flatter playing experience and allow um, the lower frets to operate properly as they weren't before. Like The first fret was just buzzing, you couldn't get a note out of it. The second fret wasn't much better either at the time, but that's fixed now. Um, also by having a slightly larger first fret than the rest. And all the frets are replaced. I literally had to take all the frets out, I had to strip the neck down, strip the finish um, and uh, pretty much redo it so that's what took the majority of the time uh, the pit guard as well that's uh, not the original pit guard obviously I, I fashioned this pit guard for this base uh, using um, a spare pit guard I had lying around I had to do a little bit of creative routing um, for it to fit around this pick pickup um, also inlaid on the uh, dials there, so it's quite a lot of detail and work gone into this. Um, so, um, <coughs> you know, 
Uh, but having said that, you know, it didn't cost me much because it was complete and utter junk. Uh, but I had to have it because it was just, uh, you know, I felt so sorry for it. It's such a beautiful looking thing. So I had to have it and uh, try my best to um, salvage it and resurrect it. And I'm pleased to say that I have done. I've, I've, I've done it and nailed it. Um, so it's working great and the body I believe is a multi-part light ash or something. It's quite a lightweight body or it might be older. Um, but anyway, it works great and um, it's available right now. Not too expensive either. I'm only asking about 40,000 yen for this plus the shipping, um, which I think considering the work that's gone into it and how nice it looks and how nice it plays, I think that's a bargain. Um, and uh, all right, what I'll do is demonstrate it now. And also, this uh, this backing riff uh, is in seven, as you might have recognised. So a bit of coffee. Um, and you can download this backing riff at my website. You can follow the link in the description below get the tabs for it as well um, and uh, I'll do a, a little lesson portion at, just after the demonstration. Anyway, the demonstration is going to be quick. So you've been hearing it on the rear pickup with the tone up so far. I'm going to go with the tone down now um, and play, a, play along with the bass line for a bit. And by contrast, let's turn the turn the tone up. So yeah, I mean, it's really nice, it plays great. Um, let's now go balance and keep the tone all the way up and just slap it a little bit. And you can learn about the bass line um, in the latter portion of this video. So that's with the tone all the way up for a bit of slap. Let's go uh, with the tone down now for the same thing. So you can hear, um, of course, not quite so um, crisp and detailed, but um, sounds great. Finger style as well, uh, balanced here. 
this setting. And now let's go on the front pickup. Let's go with the tone up. Let's do a bit of slap uh, and then a bit of picking. Alright, so that's with the tone up for a bit of slap. Um, let's go with the tone down for a bit of finger style. Alright, let's go back with the tone up for a bit of picking. So, I mean, you get the idea of the scope on this instrument, right? So, uh, let's now go uh, into the lesson portion of this video. I'm going to stop the backing track. And again, by the way, you can download that backing track and the tablatures that go with this lesson um, at the link in the description below. Anyway, so we're dealing with a bass line that is in an odd time signature. We're in 7, 8. And... Um, you will see in the score that it is displaced um, in the group. Very simple, actually. So we're just using three notes and a chromatic ascent because that this is in A minor. And... Um, it does have some other chord changes in it, but they all work around the A minor and resolve to it. It's, it's kind of interesting if you look at the tabs. Um, but all it's doing is going from G, which is the seventh of A minor seven, chromatically up to the root. So we're going G, G sharp, A. And um, what we're doing in the finger style part, uh, I'll do that on the rear pickup. <laughs> So uh, 
uh, it makes it a little bit funky. It bounces along a little bit because of the, the rhythm being uh, displaced a little bit. Um, so, but the first ones are just three straight eighth notes. And then the, the second part is displaced eighth notes, displaced by one sixteenth. Which you can see very clearly if you look at the score um, above the tabs. So you'll have the dots and the tablature below it, so um, it's very easy to understand. Um, so there's, there's that. Um, and um, I recommend also practicing it slap style. And this, uh, for this, I'm, I'm using just a percussive uh, element with my... I use my middle finger, excuse me for giving you the middle finger. But I use that to pop the G string and I use my index finger to pop the D string. Other people just use their index p finger all the time. Um, whichever you're comfy with, but that's just what I do. But that's the pattern. It's actually not that difficult. And I'm doing down strokes with the thumb all the time. There's a little double thumb in this one. It's just using um, the open G all the time um, for the percussive element there. So um, again, that's uh, that's all tabbed out, um, and uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, as with everything, I recommend you start practicing without a metronome just very slowly just putting together the pieces um, the component parts that's your technique so in this case you're going to be using down thumbs and you're going to be popping okay so you're going to get those movements You can also pop on the on the C there as well. That's also tabbed out. So, yeah, get the get the technique and component parts that you need without the metronome first, because otherwise the metronome is going to stress you out, and distract you. Then, when you've got that, then you can start practicing with the metronome or click or drum beat, whatever. And start nice and slow. I would suggest maybe um, this is in seven eight and it's at 185 BPM. Um, 185 eighth notes per minute that is that's not quarter notes um, and um, so in other words it's about 92.5 right uh, in quarter notes um, so I would start off maybe at 30 percent of speed and gradually build up um, until you get really confident and you can just bounce those notes off. You know? Um, and that's it. Um, and if you want a real challenge, you can learn that lick at the end. If you want to. Um, it's also tabbed out, but it's a little bit tricky. But it's kind of it, it's a, it's a nice little lick, and it'll be very useful um, in solos as well. So, but yeah. So that's the lesson portion. Download at the link below. Uh, you have to subscribe to get the tabs and and backing tracks, though. So, but subscription fees are very low, and it helps me just to keep um, bringing content to that channel. So please check it out, and if you want subscribe and you'll get your password and access um, within 24 hours of subscribing okay thanks again for watching another naked sound review uh, incorporating a lesson